In this video, I will walk you through free response question number four from the 2011 Form B AP Calculus exam. Consider a differentiable function f having domain all positive real numbers and for which it is known that f prime is equal to this function for all x greater than zero. Part A, find the x-coordinate of the critical point of f. Determine whether the point is a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or neither for the function f. Justify your answer. If I want to find the critical points, uh, first I want to rewrite this equation a little bit. So we have f prime is equal to, I see the negative exponent, so this would be the same as 4 minus x over x to the third power. I'm writing it this way because I need to find where f prime is equal to 0. That's one source of critical values. But I also need to find where f prime is undefined. That is another source of critical values. If I want to know where a fraction is equal to 0, I set the numerator equal to 0. So I have 4 minus x is equal to 0. Adding x to both sides, I get x equals 4. So here is one critical number. If I want to know where x is undefined, well, if I want to know where f prime is undefined, I set the denominator equal to 0. So that would be x to the third power is equal to 0, which would give us x equals 0. However, we are told that uh, f prime is only defined for x greater than 0. So this does not count. So this is the one critical point that we were looking for. Well, the x coordinate anyway. To determine whether f has a relative maximum, a relative minimum, or neither at x equals 4, I have a choice. I can either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. I'm going to do both, but I'm going to show you the first derivative test first. So for the first derivative test, you make a sign chart of f prime. Be sure to label your sign chart as first derivative. I'm going to have a row for each factor in my f prime. So I have this endpoint because the first derivative is only defined for x greater than 0. So I'm going to start my sign chart at 0. I'm going to put a parenthesis to show that 0 is not actually included in the domain. And then I mark my critical value of 4. So the factor of x minus 4 corresponds to the critical value of 4. It is going to be positive for values that are uh, between 0 and 4. And 4 minus x will be negative for values that are greater than 4. x to the third power is going to be positive in both of these intervals because x to the third power is positive whenever x is greater than 0. Looking at the overall sign of f prime, in the first interval it will be positive and in the second interval it will be negative. Here is our summary and justification. f has a relative max at x equals 4 because f prime changes from positive to negative. This makes sense to us because if f prime goes from positive to negative, that means the original function f must go from increasing to decreasing. All right, there's your f prime positive and your f prime negative. So that would mean that we have a relative maximum at the point of tangency. For the second derivative test, you need to find the second derivative. In other words, we need to take the derivative of the first derivative. This is a quotient, so I'm going to use the quotient rule. The quotient rule says low d high less high d low. 
draw the line and down below the bottom squared will go hopefully this is the first this is not the first time you're hearing that poem so let's see let me say that again low d high that means we start with the bottom that's the low so i have x to the third power d high means uh, the derivative of the numerator so the derivative of 4 minus x is negative 1. So low d high is x to the third power times negative 1. Low d high less high d low. Less means subtraction. High is uh, the 4 minus x. And d low is the derivative of the denominator. So d low will be 3x squared. So this is low d high less high d low. Draw the line and down below, the bottom squared will go. If I take the denominator and square it, that's going to be x to the sixth power. All right, so that's why I'm gonna have x to the sixth power. Let's simplify this a bit. First of all, I put the negative sign in the front of the first term, and I move the 3x squared to the front in order to make it more obvious what I'm going to do next. I am going to distribute negative 3x squared across the 4 minus x. That gives me this. Now I notice that we have like terms here and here. If you combine these, you get 2x to the third power. So now I have this. In the numerator, I notice that I have a common factor of 2x squared. So I'm going to factor that out. f double prime of x is equal to 2x squared. I think I'm going to need the space. All right, so that's going to leave x minus 6. Okay, and this is divided by x to the third power, uh, sorry, x to the sixth power. The two x's in the numerator will cancel out two of the x's in the denominator, and that will leave me with f double prime is equal to two times x minus six over x to the fourth power. Remember that early on, we found this one critical value, x equals 4. For the second derivative test, you evaluate f double prime at the critical value of 4. So this will be 2 times 4 minus 6 over 4 to the fourth power. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. So we have negative 4 over 4 to the 4th power. All that matters is that this is negative. So f double prime at 4 is less than 0. It's time for the summary statement and justification. I left these two blanks here because I want to emphasize to you, when you use the second derivative test, the justification has two parts to it. f has a relative maximum at x equals 4 because the first part is f prime at 4 is equal to 0. And the second part is f double prime at 4 is less than 0. It's negative. The fact that f prime at 4 equals 0 means that we have a horizontal tangent line at 4. But that fact alone does not tell us whether we have a min, a max, or a point of inflection. We just know that there's a horizontal tangent line. The second derivative tells us whether a function is concave up or concave down. So the fact that f double prime at 4 is negative indicates that we are talking about a function that will be concave down at the point of inflection. So that allows us to conclude that we have a relative maximum at x equals 4. 
For this particular problem, the first derivative test was way easier, so we would just go with that. Part B, find all intervals on which the graph of f is concave down. Justify your answer. Concavity is indicated by the second derivative. So I'm going to borrow the work that I just did when I showed you the second derivative test. Remember all this good work? So yeah, f double prime is equal to two times x minus six over x to the fourth power. I'm going to copy that down. To determine where f is concave down, I need to make a sign chart of f double prime. So I need to know where f double prime is equal to zero, and I need to know where f double prime is undefined. A fraction will equal zero when the numerator is equal to zero. So that means x is equal to six. A fraction will be undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. So that would be when x is equal to zero. So let's put these two values on a number line to make the sign chart. Make sure you label the sign chart as f double prime. I'm starting at zero because we were told in the setup that x is greater than zero. And here's my value of six where f double prime is equal to zero. I have a row for x minus six and a row for x to the fourth power. I'm ignoring the two because uh, having a positive constant doesn't change the sign of anything. It wouldn't hurt if you wanted to put a two here, but it just doesn't change anything and it, I just find it to be simpler. So um, the factor of x minus six is going to be negative between zero and six, and it will be positive for values of x that are greater than six. x to the fourth power is going to be positive no matter what. It's an even exponent, so it makes everything positive. Um, also, these x values are all positive anyway. In the first interval, we have a negative divided by a positive, so that's going to be a negative for f double prime and f double prime will be positive in the last interval. We know that the original function f will be concave up when f double prime is positive and concave down when f double prime is negative. So in this case, f is concave down on the interval from zero to six because f double prime is negative. Part C, given that f at one is equal to two, determine the function f. Remember, we were given this function for f prime. So how do I go from f prime to f? We integrate. So let's integrate both sides of the equation. If I integrate the left side, it will turn f prime back into f. So on the right-hand side, I need to integrate four minus x over x cubed dx and see what we get. I'm going to use the a plus b over c rule. a plus b over c can be split up as two fractions, a over c plus b over c. So I can rewrite this integral as four over x to the third power minus x over x to the third power. Bringing the x to the third out of the denominator, we have four x to the negative three power. And x divided by x to the third power is x to the negative two power. You can think of it as one minus three gives you negative two. So now we can integrate term by term. Using the power rule of integration, we add one to this exponent. So that's going to make this x to the negative two power. So I have x to the negative two. And then you divide by your new exponent. So I already have a four here, but if I divide four by negative two, that's going to make negative two. So I will have a negative two now in the front. Adding one to this exponent will give me negative one power. So I have x to the 
negative one power dividing by my new exponent so uh, this is like a negative one so negative one divided by my brand new negative one will give me a positive one and let's go ahead and temporarily put our constant of integration I'm saying temporarily because we have enough information to solve for this. Before we find the value of c, let's go ahead and write f without the negative exponents. So now we have this. They told us that f at 1 is equal to 2. So start by simply writing that down. f at 1 is equal to 2. So what is f at 1? f at 1 means substitute 1 for all the x's. So f at 1 will be negative 2 over 1 squared plus 1 over 1 plus c. So this is f at 1, and this should equal 2. Simplifying, 1 squared is just 1, so we have negative 2 plus 1 plus c is equal to 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, so negative 1 plus c is equal to 2. Adding 1 to both sides, we get c is equal to 3. If we put 3 in for c, we have function f.